because now 75% of the bits was the most instructive, instructive uh, uh, demonstration of that. But it's it, it's everywhere in the mobile space. It's everywhere in the consumer space, and. Um, no matter how you cut it and look at it, it's the fastest growing, the most pervasive, drawing the most capital to build factories, and the fastest moving in terms of uh, aggressive ground rules. So it's uh, it's it's and, that, and that's all it's all happened just in the last in the last few years. Um, it's 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 not nearly as standardized um, as as a traditional semiconductor memory market uh, memory memory product set is. And we build, at Denali, we build uh, simulation models for memories. And from one vendor to another in DRAMs, it's, it's a, there's a lot of commonality between, between the model of an Alpita DRAM and a Samsung DRAM. But if you look at a Toshiba NAND and a Samsung NAND, there's, there's much, much less commonality. So it's a, it's a bigger job for us to, to do an accurate model you know, based, on the, based on what the, the silicon actually does. <coughs> The, the NAND market is dominated by three or four players: IMFT, um, which is Intel and Intel and, um, and Micron. Uh, Samsung has uh, about 40 percent of the market. Uh, SanDisk and Toshiba have a very extensive uh, co-development and fab sharing arrangement and, and Hynix. And um, and you know how that how that rolls out. You know that was part of the discussion with the panel, but how that rolls out over the next several years is uh, re remains to be seen. It's a very expensive game. Three three billion dollars for a fab, and um, and the capex for this year, as I mentioned in, in the panel, the capex for the NAND manufacturers is comparable to their revenues, not their profits. Their profits look like they're going to be zero this year, so they're getting money from someplace to build the fab, and it's spe it's expected to build based on the expectation that the market's going to continue to grow 90, 100, 120 percent per year over the next year, over the next several years to keep keep the fab. From this just shows you how fast how fast everything changed. Um, NAND, NAND was almost non-existent in 1999 and 2000. The only practitioners were SanDisk, Toshiba on the one hand, and Samsung. Um, but in 2004, it became the lowest price per bit memory. 2005, it became the top seller in, in megabytes shipped. And in 2007, NAND shipped more megabytes than DRAMs has shipped since the invention of the DRAM back in the early 1970s. And that just shows you that the power of this compound growth is 150% year over year. More NAND is shipped, will be shipped in 2008. It was shipped in 2007 back to T equals zero. So every year you're shipping more than you shipped in all previous history. The market still manages to grow even though the prices are going down 50% a year. And that's just the, it's just the uh, gigabit growth rate times the, times the price attrition rate and, and which one can outrun the other one. Um, you know, it looks like this year is probably going to be about the same as last year, 15 billion. Um, depends on when the forecast was made, but I've seen some as high as, uh, as 18 billion, but maybe those were earlier in the year. Um, if there's a little bit of price stability, it translates very quickly into, into revenue growth because the, the gigabit shipments are growing 28% from quarter to quarter. So if you get price stability from one quarter to the next, then your, then your revenues go up 28%. So it doesn't take much. And in the middle of last year, that's, that's what happened. So last year kind of turned out OK, although the prices receded later in the year. Um, you know, I, showed you the, I showed you the DRAM process ground rules. And the lead, I think NAND has been the most aggressive ground rules now for, for three or four years. But the lead, I think DRAM guys kind of closed the gap a little bit uh, with their advances over the last 12 or 18 months. But this kind of shows where everybody stands right now. Um, it's, at the end of this year, um, the average NAND product will be made in ground rules is probably 45, 46 nanometers. Very aggressive, um, very aggressive. And part of it is because the um, the nature of NAND is it's got a lot of error correction, wear leveling, bad block management, and you can and you can tolerate a certain amount of of, of yield loss and and correct it out so it looks good to the looks good to the um, the final user anyway, but uh, you know the market leader here is, is, uh, is, is as of a couple months ago is, is IM Flash Technology, which rolled out their 35, 30, 34 nanometer product, and um, and uh, they're, they're, they plan on having half of their Lehigh fab filled with that product uh, by the end of the year. With, uh, with growth comes diversity, and and you can see 
from the comments in the panel, all the cross currents in technology and demand and applications, applications requirements, being, being able to even characterize your application um, is going to, it's going to be a messy process to get from here to there. And there are lots of different approaches and, and um, you know, how much do you want to trade off endurance and read write, uh, read write speed. Um, cost in, in your application, but it's it's going to get a lot messier before it gets a lot uh, before it gets a lot cleaner. And I think the consensus in this group at the panel was that it's never going to settle down into a into a single or even a small group of, of products. There's good, there's, that diversity is going to remain.